We welcome John to the stage. John. So there's a saying that we used to say when we were kids. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt. Not, and I used to believe that. I used to say that all the time. But then you get older and you start realizing that that's not true. Start realizing that words have power. You know, I, I was raised to use my words to cut people and to destroy them, not to affirm and encourage them. But then you get older and you start realizing that words have value. Like when two people come together and they say, I love you, those three words can change your life. And I'm slowly realizing that three words changed my life. So I grew up in a poor Latino neighborhood and the average income of the Latino family in that community was $20,000 a year. That's below the poverty line for most families, especially if you're Latino and you have some kids. And so when you're in a situation like that, you don't really value education. And it's not, a, it's not any shade on these people, I just don't think they have that luxury to be able to think about that. You're just trying to survive from day to day. And so you do anything you can to survive, and that means work and money comes first, and education comes second. And so the district realized this, and what they did is they instituted what they called a gifted program. They would ask teachers to partner and to find Latino boys and Latino girls that were third grade and fourth grade, and they would identify them and put them in this honors program so they can go all the way through honors, all the way through high school, and be competitive for universities. And, and, and I, got, I got chosen for that. And, and my mom was so proud because I was going to have a chance. I was going to have the opportunity to do something with my life. I was going to have the opportunity to get out and be somebody. And I remember when, when, when I first started going, it was great, right? Because they have these, uh, these, these, um, these different activities you do, and it's a core that kind of grows together. And, and you do uh, different types of math problems and different types of sentences. But like all educational endeavors, it cannot account for outliers. And I was a creative outlier. I wanted to do puzzles and I wanted to paint. And they wanted us to do math problems. And I just got tired of that because I didn't want to go to school part two. So I stopped going. And because it just couldn't account for people like me that were different. And I remember I was home one time. My mom said, why aren't you in the gifted program? You love that. It's just good for you. And I said, I hate it. And she said, why? And I said, because they make us do more homework and more math. And I don't want to do that. My mom thought for a second. And she said, yeah, but this is good for you. This makes me proud. And so I went begrudgingly, and the next day I was dreading school, but I had to go. And I waited all day, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't wait for school to end, but at the same time, I didn't want to go to the gifted program. And I remember when I got there, I remember what I was wearing, I was wearing black jeans and a white polo, and I walked in, and the whole class got quiet. And I remember Mrs. Still got quiet, and she looked at me. And I was in third grade, right? And she says, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, I'm in this class. And she said, no, you're not. And I said, oh, oh yes, I am. I just... I haven't been able to make it the last few weeks. And she says, why'd you come? You never come anyway. You don't belong. And you should go. And I remember I walked out and my third grade heart was broken. <laughs> it was the first time I got denied by a woman. <laughs> and it was heavy. And I wasn't ready for that. And I cried all the way home. Because my mom was so proud of me. And I had been rejected. And I made up a lie. The class was canceled. And I never went back because I didn't want mom to know that I didn't belong. And then I got to middle school, and they didn't put me in any honors classes. Then I got to high school, and I went to high school, I didn't get to go into AP classes like all the other kids that I had that were friends from elementary school. And at the high school I went to, when there's 4,500 students, a 50% dropout rate, and 5 to 10% college placement rate, the administrators focus their attention on certain students and not others. They don't focus on students that don't belong because they need to invest their time wisely. And so I had to fight for my own dreams. And then I went to community college, and when I went to community college, I was scared because people knew more than me, and they had read more books than me, and they were smarter than me. And I would always think, I don't belong. And then I transferred to a university, and it, it was great, but I, the fear overcame me again, because these people had a plan for their lives, and they knew what they were doing. And they were going somewhere in life, and I wasn't. And they couldn't help but think, I don't belong. And then I got into grad school, <laughs> and I actually was able to graduate twice. And, and, and as I'm growing confidence, I'm thinking, man, I'm finally being able to do something, but I just cannot shake from my mind the fact that I don't belong. And now I'm in my 30s, and I'm applying for PhDs, and I'm terrified. I'm terrified of the future, 
I'm terrified that people know more than me. I'm terrified that someone is smarter than me. I'm terrified that I won't get in. I'm terrified to fill out applications because I cannot help but think those three little words that I don't belong. And so as I'm getting older, I'm learning that words have power and words have meaning and words have value. And sometimes three words can change your life. Thank you. John, John, everybody.